Okay, you guys. So in this section, this is just kind of a review of everything we've done um, up until the point of or up to partial fraction decomposition. <clears throat> so this is kind of just a set of guidelines um, that will help you. Again, this is not the only set that you need of guidelines. You, you kind of have to have some intuition as well. Um, but these are kind of, I guess, a way that you can recognize what type of problem you're dealing with. So the first thing you want to do when you're kind of going through your checklist is you're, if you're trying to figure out what to do is I would say you should always simplify first. So simplifying first is really important because it allows you to see the problem for what it really is. Maybe it's not as bad as you thought. One of those things would be, um, for example, doing long division. Long division can come sometimes make the problem much faster. Um, even though the long division is annoying, it can make the problem itself faster. Um, look for a u sub. Um, so obviously u sub is like our bread and butter uh, technique for integration. So that's one of the first things you do is you look and see what a u sub work because there's no point using any of these harder techniques over here if you can just do a simple u sub. Okay, and then we come to look for obvious cases. So product of a trig function, then we use trig integrals, that technique that we learned. Um, rational functions. Rational functions are normally going to be PFD. So normally we either use um, long division or partial fraction decomposition. Not always, but this is just a good, a good way to start. Um, a polynomial times a trig function or an exponential function or a natural log function um, or a standalone function oftentimes will be integration by parts. And this is our ultraviolet voodoo, right? to memorize it, integration by parts. Um, things in one of the forms for trig sub. Okay, well, that's obvious. If it's in the trig sub form, then you can either outright use the trig um, uh, inverse trig function, or you can use uh, trig substitution, obviously. Okay, uh, oops, I wrote that on the wrong thing. And then we have um, <clears throat> try a strange substitution, something a little weird that, that, you know, just looks a little different. Maybe that's the secret to that problem. Um, rationalizing or multiplying by some one. Um, again, that works throughout all of math. As far as I've ever gone in math, you're still using multiplying by one and adding zero to things to make things clean up. It's something that never goes away. So this is just kind of our guidelines, right? Um, this is something that we want to keep in mind when we're doing these. So I have uh, quite a few examples for you right here. Um, so let me zoom out so you can see all of them. So if you want, pause the video and write all these down and try to do the ones that you know how to do and then unpause the video and come back and I'll go over them with you. Okay, so hopefully you guys pause the video, tried a few of them at least on your own. Let me zoom in a little bit so I can work on these. Okay, so let's work on this one first. This one says the square root, the integral of the square root of x minus two, x plus two. So um, for all of these problems, we're just gonna evaluate these integrals and see what happens. So. I'm not 100% sure what to do. Uh, it, it's not really a rational expression um, or a rational function, so I'm going to eliminate that. I don't really think I can simplify using, you know, any type of, uh, you know, long division or anything like that. So what I'm going to try is I'm first just going to try u sub. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let u equal x minus 2. Okay, let me see here. You know what, I think I'm gonna to have to make it square root of x minus two, all right? Um, now, when I do that, that means that du is equal um, to, let's do this, du is equal to one half x minus two to the negative one half du, oops, I'm sorry, dx, right? So that really means that du equals um, dx over two times the square root of x minus two. So what I can do then is I believe we should be able to move this two times the square root over. So this becomes du, oops, let me write this like this. Otherwise I'm gonna run out of room. Yeah, let me go up here. 
So now I'm gonna multiply the two and the square root of X minus two over to the other side. So I have two square root of X minus two du equals dx, right? I need a, a direct substitution for dx. The problem is, is uh, I shouldn't say the problem, but the good news is, <clears throat> is we know that u is worth the square root of x minus two. So I have two u du equals dx. So I've solved for dx, I've isolated that. But now I need to account for that x plus two. So I can do that a couple ways. Um, what I think I'm gonna do is, let me see here, could I square? Yeah, I could square. So I could take this and I could say u squared equals x minus two. And then I just add two to both sides. So now I have u squared plus two equals x. So we have this, okay? That can go right, let me see if this will work how I want. That'll go right there. This will go right there. And then the dx, this will go right there. So we have our perfect substitution. So uh, again, very complicated substitution. This is u sub with the change of variable kind of all over the place. So now we're gonna integrate. Now we know the square root of x minus two is worth a u. We know that dx is worth uh, times two u du all divided by, now we know x is worth um, u squared plus two, but there's already a plus two in the denominator. So this is gonna become u squared plus four, okay? So let's see what we have here. So we end up with the integral, let me write this. This would be two integral u squared all over u squared plus four du, okay? Now, whenever you have <clears throat> whenever you have the numerator and the denominator, by the way, we now have a rational expression. Whenever you have the numerator and the denominator with the same power, so I'm looking at this and this is a power of two and this is a power of two, that means more than likely long division will work, okay? Or not more than likely, long division will work and that could be a technique you wanna use. So I'm gonna run out of room. So I'm gonna take this over here. I didn't leave myself enough room, sorry about that. And I'm gonna do long division on u squared u squared, <laughs> I keep writing it wrong. And this is u squared plus four, okay? So u squared divided by u squared plus four. So this would be a one, right? And then this becomes u squared plus four. When we draw the sign, we change the symbol. Uh, when we draw the bar, we change the, the symbol to negative. So then this would become gone and this would be minus four. So we end up with minus four over u squared plus four. Okay, so that is now my um, long division. So now I have, um, let's see here, two times the integral of one minus four over u squared plus four du. Okay, now I can integrate this piece by piece. So this will be, um, let me see here, two, the integral of one is just u, right? And then now this will become minus eight. Now this right here looks very familiar. This looks like an arctangent um, one that I gave you guys <clears throat> um, from the, um, the list. Let me see if I still remember where I have a trig integrals. Um, hmm, I think it might be in a different section, but um, this is basically, this is basically a formula that we know. Remember we memorized arc sine and arc tan. Okay, so A in this case is two. So, <clears throat> oops, hold on real quick. Let me fix my notes. So A in this case is two because two squared is four. So we're gonna end up with eight over two. Uh, I'm gonna run out of room really bad here. So um, I'll just have to rewrite that one. And that one. Okay, so this is gonna be 
um, to you eight over two. So this would be four. And then we're going to do tan inverse, okay, of one half u or u over two. You know, what? I'll do it like the, I think they do it in your um, book, u over two plus c. Okay. Now the problem with that is, is nobody ever asked us for u. So we now have to adjust. So we know that u is worth the square root of x minus two. So we have two square root of x minus two minus four times the arc tan. And then we know that u is square root of x minus two over two plus c. Okay. So this would be our solution for this first one. Okay. Sorry about that. I kind of ran out of room. I, I guess I didn't leave myself even close to enough room for these problems. Um, I thought it was plenty. Um, so let's go here. So let me move this one over. Uh, number two will be here. And this will be one to two x cubed ln of x. Is that a dy? That's supposed to be a dx right there. ln of x dx, okay? So um, <clears throat> let's go to our kind of guidelines for this one. Our guidelines say that this should be um, integration by parts because we have a polynomial times a log. And we remember that when we're doing um, ultraviolet voodoo, we need our u. Lipit tells us that log should be what we declare our u to be because they're easier to differentiate than they are to integrate. And then over here we have our v and over here we have our dv and over here we have our du. So we know u is ln of x, and then that means that our dv is x cubed, right? dx, right? So now when we take the derivative of ln of x, we get one over x dx, and then v becomes x to the fourth over four, okay? So we're gonna then substitute this in. Um, so we now have the integral from one to two, oops, oops, oops. We're gonna say that this is equal to now ultraviolet, so u times v. So this would be x to the fourth ln of x all over four. So that's u times v minus the integral from, and this is from one to two, oops. Yeah, um, this is from one to two. And then this is um, ultraviolet voodoo v du. So this would be v du. Okay, so let's simplify. So this would actually be one fourth integral of x cubed dx. So this is actually a pretty nice one, right? And then this becomes, oops, and this is still from one to two, x to the fourth ln of x over four minus uh, what would that be? X to the fourth over four. So this would end up being one sixteenth um, X to the fourth. And now I'm going to do the whole thing from one to two. Okay. So let me just double check this, make sure I wrote it down correctly. Yeah, I wrote the problem right. Okay. So let's see here. Looks good. Now let's plug in our values. So now we're going to plug two into there. So this should be two to the fourth, which would be 16 over four. Um, so that should be four ln of two, okay? Um, minus, this should be what, 16 over 16, so minus one, okay? So that's F of, big F of A, I'm sorry, big F of B. Now we have to do big F of A. And this would become, um, zero, because the ln of one is zero, minus one sixteenth. So we have four ln natural log of two plus, what is that? One sixteenth minus one, fit minus 15 sixteenths, I believe. Yeah, let's do that, 15 sixteenths. So when we clean this up in this, we get this. So this would be our final answer for this one. So hopefully you guys are getting these right, okay? Um, I, geez, I'm gonna have to rewrite all of these. Um, yeah, I didn't leave myself enough room. I'm just gonna go from left to right now. Oh, there's not even room there, okay. So, um, 
want to do this. Okay, so this one, I'm just going to write this one. Let me just move that over there for now. Let me just move that over there for now. And then we'll go back to um, the two that I had. Okay, so which was the next one that I had? Oh, I believe it was the number three. I believe it was this. Hopefully I'm doing it in the right order. I don't remember the exact ones because I wrote them down on here. So sine squared X, cosine cubed X DX. Okay. Now, again, this should be a dead giveaway, right? This is trig integrals because you have two trig integrals being multiplied. We kind of know what we're supposed to do from here. Um, we have sine squared X cosine squared X times cosine X. Remember we save a cosine when it's odd and then we're going to convert. So this would be sine squared X times one minus sine squared X times cosine x dx. And remember, all I'm doing is I'm saving this for when I let u equal sine. <clears throat> so now I'm going to say u equals sine x. So then du is equal to cosine x dx. We have our perfect substitution right there. Now we go here and we're going to uh, integrate. This would become, uh, let me just write it. This would become u squared minus u squared um, and then this is going to be du. So just to save a little space, um, this is going to be u squared minus u to the fourth du. And that makes it nice, right? u cubed over three minus u to the fifth over five plus c. But we know that u is actually worth sine of x. So this becomes sine cubed x over three minus sine to the fifth x over five plus c. There's that one. Okay, and then number four, I believe I had it as a weird one, right? I think that was one of the strange ones. Let's try this one. I think this is what I had for number four. Um, by the way, let me double check my note to make sure that I got the right answer. Yeah, that should be good. Okay, um, so now we have dx over one minus cosine x. Okay, so this one's a little bit strange because we can't do long division. You know, we're looking to see, obviously it's not um, a trig sub because it's already in terms of trig. Obviously it's not a trig integral because it's not powers of cosine. Um, you know, I'm kind of, it's definitely not integration by parts. It's not a U sub. So that means we're probably gonna have to try some special scenario. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try multiplying by one. So I can multiply numerator and denominator by one plus cosine X. I'm gonna use the conjugate. Again, that, that's why you do a lot of math problems. Sometimes people feel like doing homework is really annoying, but it, it opens your mind to all these different possibilities that you can work with that I can't cover. I can't cover every single scenario that could ever happen. So you kind of have to be comfortable with working with new things, okay? So let's move on to um, distributing this. So let me move these once again. Okay, so if we distribute this, this is going to become um, the integral of one plus cosine X all over one minus cosine squared X DX. Now, <clears throat> The reason I kind of thought to do this is because in my mind, I know when I multiply one minus cosine X by its conjugate, I'm going to get one minus cosine squared X. And that is amazing because I know that's really just sine squared, right? That's something we've been using for a long time in math. So then we have one plus cosine X all over sine squared X DX. And again, maybe it doesn't look great, but the numerator is two pieces, two terms, and the denominator is one. So I can split this. So this becomes one over sine squared x dx um, plus integral cosine x over sine squared x dx. And again, still not 100% sure if this is the way to go, but it feels good. Now we know that sine 
squared in the denominator is really the integral of cosecant squared x dx plus, um, let's see here, this would be, let me double check this. Oh, this might be a u sub. We can do a u sub right here, it looks like. If I let u equal um, sine, oops, not dx, and then I let du be or cosine x dx, I can do a nice little u sub. So this will now become um, du over u squared, right, which is a very nice integral. So now we know that the integral of cosecant, we know that the integral of cosecant squared x is actually negative cotan x, right? Because the integral of secant squared is actually tangent. So then the integral of cosecant squared is actually negative cotangent. And you know you're right because you could take the derivative of cotangent, uh, negative cotangent, and you get positive cosecant squared. Now this is gonna become plus u to the negative one divided by negative one plus c. Okay, because u is really uh, in the denominator, so it's u to the negative two. So this becomes negative cotan x minus, now here's the thing. This is one over u, but what's u? In this case, we said u was sine x plus c. So this is technically the correct answer, but I have a feeling um, your book would probably want you then to convert it. What is sine in the denominator? That's cosecant x plus c. So I have a feeling that would be the, the perfect answer. Okay. Jeez, there's just no room for anything. Okay. So I'm going to move that one there for now. Let's move this one over here. Okay. So now let's start on this one. Okay, so now we have number five. So number five, once again, that looks kind of rough. Uh, that looks like a extremely difficult problem. So take a minute, go through all your checklist, go through, you know, the guidelines and say, well, is it a use of, well, maybe, is it this, well, maybe. Um, so let's see what we actually get. Um, Okay, so you guys hopefully decided that it might be a use of, maybe it's also some kind of trig sub. Um, it has a trig sub feel to it. Um, so let's try to do u sub first, um, but maybe we could have also done trig sub. Uh, I just feel like if I let u equal 2x minus 25 square rooted, it has a very similar feel to this problem right here <laughs> because it has an extra x. So um, let me see here. That means that u squared is equal to, you know what, I, won't, I don't want to mess you guys up and do it um, different than I've been doing it. Let me do this. u equals square root of 2x minus 25. So then du is equal to 1 half um, 2x minus 25 to the negative 1 half times 2, right? Because the chain rule. So then these twos cancel, okay? And then this becomes 2x minus 25 square rooted du is equal to dx, right? If I do the same thing as last time, I multiply it over to the other side. But so this is really u du equals dx, okay? So we have that. Um, let's see, that, does that look good? And then I also need to solve for x. So I'm gonna come over here and square both sides. So this will become u squared equals two x minus 25. Um, so let's do plus 25 plus 25. So we now have um, u squared plus 25 divided by 2 equals x. So we now have all of that. Whew, that's a lot, right? That's, that's pretty tough, okay? But it's very similar to that first one we did. All right, so now, um, let me see here. I feel like I'm missing one. Oh, no, there's that one. So then, uh, let me see. I think we can substitute everything in now, I think. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we now know that our dx is worth u du, okay, divided by, we know our x is worth u, let's call it one half, one half u squared plus 25. And then we know that 
the square root of 2x minus 25, right? This right here, we know that that's worth u. So this is times u. Okay, so let's see what this cleans up to be. All right, so this becomes the integral. I'm going to take, now if you have a one half in the denominator, that's actually a two on the outside, right? It's actually a two in the numerator if you have a one half in the denominator. So this is gone. I move that outside. Um, the u's cancel, right? So I'm left with du over u squared plus 25. So this kind of used a little bit of everything. It used some canceling, some fancy u sub, um, like a kind of an exotic u sub. And we're left with u squared over 25. Now, technically, this fits the form of trig sub. But this is also not a harder problem because you have this particular trig sub memorized. This should be a formula that you now know. So this should be 2. And we have arctan. Oops, hold on real quick. It's 2 times 1 over 5. Um, let's see here, arctan. You know, I'm going to write it in the next line. So this is 2 times 1 over 5, so 1 over a, um, tan inverse or arctan. And then we're going to do 1 over 5 again uh, times, um, let me think here, u plus c, right? Or you could, you know what? I like doing it. I like writing it like this better, u over 5. Okay, so now we le are left with 2 over 5, 10 inverse, but what's u? We said u from the beginning was the square root of 2x minus 25 all over 5 plus c. Okay, now I have a feeling that we could have maybe done trig sub from the very beginning, but trig sub is one of the hardest techniques to do and it takes so long. So if you can find a u sub around it, sometimes we try it. Um, I think I might do on the exam where I give you a problem and I specifically say you must use trig sub for this problem, even though there might be a u sub way, just so I can keep the problem, um, you know, manageable and not make it too hard, but also not make it easy where you don't even have to use trig sub. You actually must use trig sub to show me you know what you're doing. Okay, so there's that one. Okay, so now let's do number six. Where did I put six? Okay, here's six. bring this guy over here and let's move this guy over to here. Okay, so, so far so good. Sorry guys, I, I really honestly thought I could do the problems in a smaller space, um, but I guess not. So here we have uh, what type of problem? Well, uh, I think most of you, after you're doing the homework, you can recognize that this is a PFD. This is a partial fraction decomposition, so I'm going to factor it first. So this becomes dx over, now this will become x squared times x plus 1, I'm using factor by grouping, plus x plus 1. So then this will become the integral of dx over x plus 1 times x squared plus 1. Sorry about that, I made the common mistake. So I just did factor by grouping. That's all I did on that. Okay. So we have an irreducible quadratic. All right. Um, we have our irreducible quadratic. And then let me double check my notes just to make sure I wrote the problem correctly. I don't want to do a wrong problem. Yeah. Okay. I wrote it right. Yep. Okay, so we have x plus 1, x squared plus 1. So we have to do partial fraction decomposition. So I got to come over here and I got to do some scratch work. I'll do some scratch work real quick. Um, if you do these problems on the exam, I must see your scratch work. You can't just have the answers all of a sudden. Um, so please show me your work on how you got the partial fraction decomposition. So we have 1 over x plus 1 times x squared plus 1 equals, and we have a over x plus 1 plus bx plus c all over x squared plus 1. 
So remember, this is um, when you have a, a irreducible quadratic term, you need the BX plus C. So I'm going to multiply everything by the LCD. So the LCD cancels this and this, and I'll just write it over here. Um, X plus one times X squared plus one all over one. And that canceled this as well. Okay, so now we have one equals um, this will end up being a times x squared plus a, right? If I distribute, oops, um, x squared plus a, yep. And then this will become bx plus c times, and then this will become x plus one. So just a little bit of work we have to do real quick. So ax squared plus a um, plus bx squared plus bx plus c x plus c so let's do a little cleanup um let me see here so we have um a plus b times x squared um let me see here we have um plus b plus c times x and then we have um b plus c times x and then we have plus a plus b Okay, um, so, you know, I probably could have done this an easier way, um, but I'm already here. This is just another technique that you can do. So I'm gonna use matrices on this. So um, we know that the coefficient in front of the X squared term has to be zero. So we know A plus B equals zero. We know that the coefficient in front of the X term has to be zero because there's nothing over here, right? So then we say B plus C equals zero. And then we know that A plus B has to be one because we have a one right here with no X attached to it. So this is actually a matrix. So this becomes one, one, um, oops, one, one, zero, zero. This becomes zero, one, one, zero. And this becomes one, one, zero, one. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take out my calculator. I'm gonna plug this in and I'm gonna do RREF. So let's go second matrix, edit. So I have one, one, zero, oops, zero. I have zero, one, one, zero. I have one, one, zero, one, okay? Let's see what we get. Okay, so I end up with this matrix, one, zero, negative one, Zero. Uh, did I type something in wrong? Yeah, I think I did something wrong on this one. It says there's no solution and I know that's not right. Hmm. So A plus B. Um, so this would be AX squared plus A. This would be BX squared plus C plus CX plus bx, so I know b plus c, so zero, one, one, zero. Hmm, so this should be one, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one. Oh. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, let me try. I, I think I messed up somewhere in here. I think I typed it or wrote it out wrong. So I'm just going to try uh, this other technique. Sorry about that, you guys. If you guys want help using the matrix, um, I think I have an error in here in my distribution. But instead of kind of butchering it, I'm going to see if I can just solve it the fast way. I was trying to show you guys how to do it this way. but. Um, for some reason, I, I think I have a typo. And instead of trying to go through and figure it out while I'm recording, I'll just do it this other way. So um, we have, this is kind of the um, other way. So this is A times X squared plus one plus B X plus C times X plus one. And let's see here. Um, 
Yeah, because I, I believe we're supposed to get one half. In my notes, I did it the other way, but I just wanted to try it this new way. But yeah, I must have messed up when I distributed or something. So um, let's see here. Let's say let x equal negative 1. OK, so when x equals negative 1, we get 1 equals 2a. And then this will be plus 0. So then a equals 1 half. Yeah. OK, so now we say that's the last nice x. Um, I want to say the next nicest one would be when x equals 0. So we have 1 equals, and this would be what, a plus, now if x equals 0, that means bx is 0, and this is 0. So we have c times 1, which is just c, OK? So a plus c equals 1, so that means 1. Um, equals one half plus c so then c equals one half so we have c and we have a so we just need one more so let's let x equal one so when we plug one in we get two a now when that's one that would be b plus c so this would be plus two b plus two c i believe and now we plug in a, which is one half. So this would be one. We plug in, or we say two b, and then two c would also be one. So this would be negative one equals two b, divide both sides by two. So we have b equals negative one half. Okay, so we have our three values. Sorry about that, you guys. I, I must have distributed wrong or, or did something wrong in my head because I couldn't get the values to clean up right. So now we have to go back and plug those into here and then integrate. So let's come over here. So now we have the integral of a. So this, I'm just going to put the one half out here of um, one over x plus one dx, right? When I put one half and I can just pull it immediately out. Plus, now I know that bx plus c um, is, I'll, I'll have to plug these in because I don't want to mess up the negative sign. So we know b is negative 1 half x plus c, but we know c is 1 half all over x squared plus 1 dx, right? So I'm going to pull the negative 1 half out. So this will be 1 half natural log of absolute value of x plus 1 plus, I'll pull the 1 half out. So minus 1 half, now this will become the integral of x minus one all over x squared plus one. Let me see if that's the right thing to do. Let me think about that real quick. Yeah. Okay, and then, um, you know what, let me do this. Okay, so we have that. Now, this actually cleans up even more. Now that I'm looking, this guy we can split. I shouldn't say cleans up, but it allows us to do it because u sub won't work right away. So let's rewrite this, Ellen. I already have um, integrated this one because it was so easy. Uh, that's x squared plus one. Now this is gonna be plus c minus one half yeah, we're going to run out of room. Let me do it here. So equals one half ln of absolute value of x plus one plus c. Now, right here, you guys, we're going to have one half. Now, we're going to integrate x over x squared plus one dx minus one half again. And this will become plus because of the one. So this will be one over x squared plus one dx. So all I did, you guys, is I split it. I took and I did this divided by this and this divided by this so I could have two separate integrals. <laughs> now this is a, um, this is a arctan right here. And this is a u sub. All right, so right here, we're going to say that u, I'm going to run out of room. So it's kind of frustrating. Oh, I guess I don't have to stop there. 
So I'm going to say right here, u equals x squared plus 1. So du equals 2x dx, divide both sides by 2. So we have that. And then this one's just plain old arc 10. So now I think we're finally done, or really darn close, ln of the absolute value of x plus 1 plus, oops, minus, I'll put the plus c at the end now, minus 1 half. Um, oh, it'll actually be 1 fourth because of the u sub. So 1 fourth. Um, let me see, this will be the integral of du over u plus one half, geez, one half tan inverse of, what is that, one over x? Or no, I'm sorry, just x plus c. So last step, this is a rough one, one half ln of the absolute value of x plus one minus one fourth ln of the absolute value. Now we know that u was actually x squared plus one. Now I probably don't even need the absolute values because um, x squared and plus one will always be positive. One half tan inverse of x plus c. Nice and easy, right? Uh, just kidding, that was a tough one. Okay. Um, yeah, you don't actually, now that I look at my notes, I don't actually need absolute values because x squared plus one will always be positive already, so it's redundant. And a lot of times in math, they don't like redundancy. Okay, so we have that one. And I think we just have one more. So let me zoom out so you guys can kind of keep track of all of this. So here's five and six. Okay, now let's move on to seven. So seven um, is specifically a problem I want to do trig sub with. So um, I picked one that was specifically a trig sub problem. If you notice, u sub won't work exactly. Maybe some of our fancy u sub will work. So I'm just going to say use trig sub for this problem. <clears throat> OK, so um, and because it has limits of integration, I actually will not need to draw the triangle because I can use the limits of integration to create a new one. So this looks like the tangent one, right? So what I'm going to do is, let me make sure I wrote it down correctly. This is x cubed x squared plus 4. Let me just make sure I got this right. Uh oh. 0 to 2, x squared plus 4, x cubed. Yeah, this is the one. OK, so I wrote it down correctly. All right, so let's look at this. So this looks like the tan one. So what we're going to do is we're going to let um, theta, oops, I'm sorry. Yeah, let theta, sorry, x equal 2 tan theta, because a is 2, OK? And um, if we were going to build the triangle, we would then divide both sides by 2. So we'd have x over 2 equals tan theta. But we're going to say dx is equal to 2 secant squared theta d theta. OK, so now we have everything we need. So <clears throat> we're going to integrate. So we now know that x is worth 2 tan theta. So this is actually going to become 8 tan cubed theta. We know dx is worth. 2 secant squared theta d theta. And now we know down here, x squared, that would be 4 tan squared theta plus 4. Now, again, this should always clean up to be something nice. That's the whole point of this, is now I can factor out the 4. Um, let me take this uh, 8 and 2 out. So this is going to be 16 integral. Um, tan cubed theta secant squared theta d theta all divided by now I know that I'm going to have um, this is going to become 4 tan squared theta plus 1 so that's really secant squared and then when you square root secant squared you're just going to get secant so this is going to become 2 secant theta so we can at least cancel one of these okay so now we have 8, because I'm going to bring that 2 out. It's going to be 16 over 2, which is 8. And then this will become tan cubed theta secant theta d theta. Now, we know that when you run into this situation, we're supposed to save one of the tangents. 
and then um, rewrite um, tangent squared to secant squared theta. So let's see what happens if we do that from our rules. This is, um, so do you guys see this is a trig sub with a trig integral problem. That's what makes this one a really tough one. I saved this one for the end. So now we're gonna have um, tan squared theta times tan theta secant theta d theta. Now we can rewrite this as, now we know tan squared is um, secant squared theta minus one. Okay, and then we have tan theta secant theta d theta. Okay, so let's see here. Um, yeah, let u equal, oops, let u equal secant theta. So then du is equal to secant theta tan theta. That's our normal little um, u sub with, remember the derivative of secant is secant tan. Um, all right, so now, again, there's a lot to this problem. Um, this becomes u squared minus one times du, but then it cleans up to something so nice. <clears throat> okay. And let's see here. Um, this becomes eight integral, or I guess this is u cubed. I guess we can do it. No, we don't, we're done. u cubed over three minus u. Now here's the problem. I wanna use limits of integration, so I never fix them. So I gotta go back. <clears throat> um, let me see how far I have to go back. Jeez, that's pretty far. Hmm. I think I'm gonna substitute back in secant theta. So this will become eight secant cubed theta over three minus secant theta. Now I can find my um, limits of integration for this. So way back here, I gotta go. I gotta go way back here. Oops. If I wanna change my limits of integration and I don't wanna draw the triangle and then back substitute in X, I have to fix this. So this I'm gonna say is um, when X equals zero, this would become zero equals tan theta, right? Because you divide both sides by two. So when is tan theta um, zero? It's that at zero, right? Tan theta is equal to zero when theta is zero. So I know my limit of integration here. So I'm gonna put that here. And then this one, we're going to get x equals two. So that means I'm gonna have two divided by two, which will be one equals tan theta. Well, when does tan theta equal one? Well, that's at pi fourths because that's uh, square root two over two divided by square root two over two. So we're gonna put pi fourths right here. And this means that I don't have to go back and substitute in by building the triangle. So I can just go from zero to pi fourths. Now um, you guys can plug these values in. Secant, uh, let me see here, secant cubed uh, will end up being two square roots of two minus secant. So this will be just square root of two. Um, let's see here. So then, yeah, I think that's it. So this would be eight times, uh, I think we get two minus the square root of two should be our final answer. And that'll be that one. Oh no, eight thirds. Sorry, I forgot to take out the three. Jeez, mm, I think there's more to it than this. Yeah, hold on, I got to, I left off the other f of b minus f of a. I got to do the f of a, so this would be eight times one third minus one. And then when you combine all this, this will be our final answer. Sorry guys, I'm getting tired. The, these are a lot of math in a row. Um, so yeah, that should be our final answer. We factor out the eight. We end up with a negative two thirds, two thirds. Yep. When you plug that all in, you should get two minus the square root of two, eight over times eight over three. So just to zoom out, that was a rough one. So these are some of the harder problems you could see, but I'm not planning on giving you all the worst of the worst. 
um, on the exam once again, but this is just good practice to make sure you understand some of these. Obviously, you know, I can't give you all of these because they just take too long. Um, so I have to kind of pick and choose, you know, you're probably going to see something like this, something nice um, like that one. Um, you're probably going to see an integration by parts similar to this. This is kind of a trick question, so you might see something like this. Um, partial fraction decomposition, you'll definitely see, but I may not give you one this hard. Um, this one just took too long. And then this one down here, this would be the worst case scenario. Um, number seven would be the worst case scenario for trig sub. Um, I'll probably give you a nicer trig sub, but I'll force you to use trig sub and not just do some other trig um, identity or something. Okay, so that's going to do it for the video, guys. Thanks for watching. It turned out much longer than I anticipated, but uh, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in class.